Hello and welcome to Advanced Bookkeeping Practice Assessments. Uh, so this is the BPP Practice Assessment for the book for the 2003-2016 sorry, syllabus. Um, you're going to see five questions in here. Uh, what you're going to see, um, you're going to see these practice assessments undertaken in real time. So it's going to be a bit rough uh, because you actually see how I'm thinking and I've sort of seen it for the first time as well. Um, when you do that, what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of a lot of workings uh, going on and uh, how I would do it in real life. This workings is, is sort of how the exam should be undertaken. So I'm sort of showing you the workings that would appear on my piece of paper. I do it in Excel, uh, but you'll see exactly what I'm writing out. Probably a bit, a bit faster actually being able to write on your, on your own piece of paper in here. Um, you, my position, what you're probably going to see would be very different to yourself, or could be different to yourselves, especially if, if you're not doing it as well, is you'll see a lot more workings, about a good 10 pages worth. Uh, which is how the exam should be should be done and why do i do it like that uh, well firstly just a, a simple bit of an exam technique and uh, the exam is computer based and sort of lacks a bit of accessibility really instead of compared to um, having a paper-based version where you could just uh, nicely uh, highlight on it and put your notes on it what have you so it makes it a lot a lot, a lot better for that, that point of view if you don't forget things like that when you're scrolling up and down the screens um you'll also see as well in the way in which i do it is very much about the ability to check the work. Um, I'm not sure that I make that many um, mistakes in this particular one. I think there's one where I have to go back and just uh, just correct myself at the end, end of it. Um, but um, in terms of that idea of being able to correct errors uh, in there, um, maybe in, in the next assessment you'll see one where where I, I make a, a couple of errors yeah, going through. But it, it, you know the, the technique that's put in place and the workings there come back and just say, hang on, you you got that in the wrong wrong way around. You're going to see a lot of T accounts and uh, number lines or also timelines uh, within within uh, this. Yeah. And it counts as the stress. Um, you'll see that I don't really get that stressed out as I'm going through. Yeah, I've got to get it all right. Um, uh, as you know, expected to. Um, but you'll see it's sort of just you've got various things you're going along, uh, things are, are going on and what have you. You know, it's not there's, there's less that's sitting in your head, a lot less than sitting in your head. I might only be thinking about one little thing at a time, and then it really takes the stress out of the whole the whole process. So definitely if you've only got a couple of pages of, of, of paper that's given to you, then you need to get hold of 10 pages of paper in your in your exam. If you keep if you keep doing it, then you're going to have to complain for, for that. You need to have uh, a, a lot of lot of paper really in, in this exam. Uh, time. Uh, you'll see as well that I take a, take um, a time in terms of the question, but I get it all right sort of straight away really. Um, even when you know, I might even sort of make a slight slip, the uh, the technique comes in and, and immediately corrects it. So it's it's. That takes a little bit longer, uh, but it's correct 100% of the time, first time. In there. So you don't have to go through and, and, and sort of be there uh, uh, checking or faffing away or, or stressing, whatever. It's, it's, it's a little bit slower for the initial run through compared to the average student, but it doesn't need more, more than one, one go through. So it'll probably take, in this one, probably in, in reality, if I would have put my head down, it would have taken about 40 minutes. I give a lot more explanations in here because I'm not going to waste the opportunity to do so. Um, but uh, yourselves probably take a good hour and 15 hour, hour and 20 minutes to, to do what would be in a two hour exam let's say um and here if you were looking at a comparison of times and then add on a bit of time where you might be struggling with various things so if you're currently the kind of person who's walking out uh, halfway through the exam uh, this kind of approach will really sort of um, turn those lost minutes into into marks and you're going to see as well uh, very much a technique based method and the way in which I go about it, I undertake the technique in there, the, what, what should be done, and then the answer drops out. Yeah, so that, that's a much much more sort of solid approach in, in terms of my view. Um, so hopefully you enjoy it. Task one. Uh, this is about recording information for non-current assets, so fixed assets then, let's say. A uh, better word for it. Already. So these are going to be assets which are going to be computers, land and buildings, cars, tables, things like that there though. For a business known as Tilling Brothers, business is registered for VAT. Okay, so let's get this down here. So we're going to have VAT in this one. And here we're going to make start writing things down on your paper. Um, okay, we receive a purchase invoice for, uh, received by Tilling Brothers, so Prostatin Machinery. So you've got some invoice numbers in here. To them, they don't right. Let's have a look through. Press machine over here. There's the nice delivery and setup charges uh, which we have, and um, which means anything that's required to put it in in place is going always going to be added onto the cost. Little thing there, though, to just add on, right? Okay, so we're going to have those two together. So the cost of the machine, the maintenance pack, that's actually an expense within the following year, and we got VAT on top. Remember, we can recover VAT, so that's not going to go into our cost sort of side in here. And the invoice is paid out in full from the bank account. So let's start writing this down then. So we've gone debit 
and we've gone credit bank. Okay, so we've got um, machine at cost, and let's put that one down 8640 and 300. 8640 plus, plus 300. And we've also got debit VAT. Okay, which is going to be that 20%. Two. We've paid for it, have we? Out now, paid in full out of the business bank account. Okay, so we've credited that figure. So that's the fixed assets part of it. Uh, the invoice period. The following information relates to the sale of a desktop computer. Let's skim through. Right, so we've got a policy. We're going to recognise items of capital over two hundred pounds. So we recognise that anyway. This maintenance pack was irrelevant because it's a charge. It's the actual software. Uh, uh, an expenses charge for the following year in any case. Um, machinery is depreciated at 25% using straight line method. Full year is charged in the, in the year of purchase, not in the year of sale. Okay, so let's go through our depreciation then. Depreciation. That's our rate anyway. Our rate is going to be 25%. Let's see if we've got any kind of residual value um, which we're sort of searching for. See what happens there though. Um, Computer equipment, and we've got 30% per annum using diminishing balance, so reducing balance. Right, for the year 31st December 2003, I record the following extract from the fixed asset register, non current asset register below. Any acquisitions of non current assets or fixed assets, any disposals of fixed assets, any depreciation for the year. No, nope, not every cell. Oh, answers to two decimal places, okay. And we got that one there. Right, okay, then let's start cracking on. So we've got computer equipment here. We disposed of one of them. We come 265 is what we disposed of in here. Date the sales 1st of January. So let's get on with this then. Here, uh, there's the acquisition date. We've got a disposal date somewhere, so we've got that in here. Do the easy bits first. And we've got a disposal date, which was the 1st of January, wasn't it? First and first next three. I know it says doing various things, but I'm just going to do this quickly. Um, what does it say in terms of our disposal proceeds? It was 850. It would have been interesting if we would have included VAT on there, but let's just go for insert shapes. And let's put this in. So this is our 850 disposal proceeds. Oh, come on. Problem is, if I set these up in advance, you'd think I was cheating. So, there's a the disposal proceeds in there. Depreciation charge in there is going to be zero because remember it said that there was no depreciation in the year of sale, so that's going to be zero. And the carrying amount also, as well, is going to be zero. So, that's the first bit of that. We have a laptop here, 693, in here, and the carrying amount at the end of last year was 5040 and remember it's sort of saying we're going for diminishing balance or reducing balance at 30 percent per annum so the cost or the depreciation charge there is only 30 percent of that 5040 so the computer is 5040 and we times that times by 30 percent so 511552 let's put that here Start putting that in. One five one two in there, and our carrying value therefore is going to be that minus that five three uh, three five two eight. Okay. Oh, sorry, a bit there. Then. Put that back down there. And there's our 3528 in there. Okay, so let's finish that one. Um, and then we've got this machinery in here. Was this the Mac one? What have we got? We call it Mac 637. That's not this one. That's another one here. So we've got some, another one to be calculating in here. We've got this one. It's not been disposed in the year. So we've got a full year's worth of depreciation in there. We've got the last year's version and it's not run out of value in there. So that's just simply going to be copying the previous year's one. There. I think that is looks to me like it's the same. So that would be 
that position there and now we're going to put in what we've got in terms of our pick lists oh, oh right, here we go so we're going to have this one here and this max 637 is going to go into that one max 637 drops into there okay and the way in which we purchased it what we got available to we've got a bank or a cash or something funding method is going to be cash then is it okay Cash. Yeah. Even better if it would have, been, would have said bank, but never mind. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to put in our cost. So if you remember our cost was these two items here. So what was that? Nine eight nine four oh. The cost just drops into here. 8940 oh, we've got a nice acquisition date as well available to us that's another cheap mark first of may to x3 filling on the shape here one five x3 Okay, so that's that one in there. And then we're going to have oh, and then we've got to put oh this is something we'll go up into there. Let's try and fit all this in. In here. Right, a depreciation charge, it said the full year's depreciation charge. Now what we've not seen here anywhere, let's check. We haven't seen any kind of residual value going on here, telling us. So purchase the invoices here. We've got these amounts here. Um, paid in full. It's not giving us any kind of idea that there's any kind of residual value in here. So when we're, when we're looking at our answer here, we've not got something which is going, um, let's say, after, what would it be, four years, it's worth £3,000. If you, let's say it was after four years, it was worth £3,000, it would be seven, seven, um, the ten seven. Two eight and the minus three thousand there though, which would be the cost. And we would times that by the rate this depreciation charge each year, so that would be it. But it's not that we haven't got a depreciation charge, no, we haven't got any residual value given to us. Yes, yeah, so we're just going to have to go for that one. Um, just sort of work out what the Sorry, let me just go through. Sorry, not the um, not the VAT charge. Um, for, uh, there we go. Right, so there we go. Just make sure we'll go back and just check that. Yep. So we don't we don't use the VAT. We're going maintenance of cost there though. There's our bank there though. There's our VAT, and there would be it. There. So there we go. Um, quick check as we're going through. Right. So oh, it's a little bit fiddly this. Right. So let's put, insert our shape here. And put our depreciation charge in here for the year, which would be our 2235. There, and then we're going to put our carrying amount into here, which is going to be that one there, 6705. Okay. There we go, 6705. Right. Well, that was useful. So that's the end of that task so task two uh, this task is about recording non-current asset information so fixed asset tan tangible fixed assets going to be into the general ledger and other non-current assets so other tangible fixed assets matters right you're working on the accounts of business which is not registered for VAT, so no VAT, and the business year ended 31st december 2003 right so know that know that and um, we've got um, well january sliding through December X3. Right, okay. On the 1st of January, business part exchange and all machinery. Okay, for a new one with a list price of 3500 Check for £1,000 paid in full and final settlement. Uh, right, so let's start looking at this in T account format here first, and then we can start to work out what journals would happen in here. So we've got Let's just put a number of them down. Okay. 
Okay, so we've got some tea accounts. So what do we do? We had there was a bank payment, wasn't there, of a thousand? And then what else did we do? Uh, new machinery. So there's a machinery a cost three thousand five hundred. So we, that's what we acquired. That was its value. So there's a disposal, which will be the difference between the two. To make our... So that's the first thing that would happen. So that's our first journal there. What we would post it. Um, the old machine costs £4,000. Okay. So the old machine cost four thousand pounds. That's the disposal there. Where are we going? Oh, sorry about here. And the business appreciation policy, and that was in the first of January two thousand and one. Okay, so it's a full year in there. But oh, difference for twenty percent using the diminishing balance, right? Okay, so we don't need the monthly but timeline. We only need a, a yearly one. So we'll go next one. Two x three, and let's just check when was it disposed of. Oh, we disposed of it on the first of January, so we've had two full years out of it. Twenty percent diminishing balance. Okay, so we started, and it was four thousand here, and at the end of it, it was, um, it will be that times by 0 0.8, and then the start of the year it was that. So at the end of the year it was that. So our cumulative depreciation is going to be 4,000 minus that figure there. So that's our cumulative depreciation. We've got 4,000 over here as well. Actually, we're going to leave that there. So cumulative depreciation so far then is going to be a credit of 1,400. So that one there will come out. So we'll be debiting that. And in the machines of costs, uh, it would go in at, well, separate that into the two items, 1,000 for the bank, and also disposal 2500. Okay, so that's our 3,500 for the first journal. And then we would also then have gone, if we've gone debit there, we would have gone 4,000 for the disposal there. Okay, and in the disposals we've gone debit the accumulated depreciation that 1440 here. Now what you'll see is that these don't um, add up here. They're not the same, so we will have a in this instance a loss on the disposal. So we'll go credit PL. Oh sorry, credit the disposal account 60 and debit. The transfer to the PL 60. That's the disposal of the asset. Right, so that is our, uh, that would be what we would sort of see there. So, what we've now got available to us here. Yeah, so, we've got some form of items in here that we're going to put in. So, we, that's number two. We've got a bank one there. Uh, some shapes. So machines at cost. That's five hundred bought forward. So we're going to go debit the bank. Ooh. That shape. With the bank thousand, and then also insert the shape and debit that one. Two five zero. Oh. Actually think what I've done is I've just um we would have disposals wouldn't we here oh my god I do think that it's probably gonna have to go there isn't it because they do like to not keep the balance card brought down and the balance carried down on separate lines which is a bit annoying right so disposals here would be the four thousand um, we, what else would we got having there though? 
Um, so we've got our disposal, sorry, our disposal at 4,000 there. And then we're going to have our, um, in this case, let's go back to here. We've got a balance brought down. Okay. Move that down a bit. Move that down a bit. Balance brought down. 12, 5, oh. Now I like to, in my notes and my workings, like to do it like this, which is just add the two up first, work out what the difference is. So the carry down is that. Is that there? Okay, and then just then re-add it up. In terms of just checking your workings, it just gives you a double check that, that you've added up correctly. Right, so uh, that will be what we're going to have in here. And we're going to have our balance carried down here. Okay. That's the first one. Let's flip over. All right, okay. Well, if we're going to have this, so is there a cumulative depreciation over here? What I'll do is instead of having all of that fiddling around, I'll just put it in here and, and rework it. Uh, right, so in terms of our cumulative depreciation in here, um, we wouldn't have that as our brought forward figure. What we're going to have here is our, where is it? It says it's 4,500. Okay, so it's 4,500. This then would be the disposals. And therefore our carry down is going to be that minus that. Then about our cumulative depreciation. Okay, and in terms of our disposals, then we've got 4,000, which is from machinery cost. In here, that's going to be the 1,400 is machinery accumulated depreciation. This is machinery cost, 2,500. In there, and just do that, and then and that's the PL um, profit and loss count on there, so that will be that, and the balance carry down will always be uh, zero on that, right? So that I think is the this task done, right? So that's the, that's that first part of it. Let's see the second part of it, uh, okay? B when fixed assets or non current assets is acquired by paying regular monthly amounts over a set period and then having ownership transferred at the end of that period, the funding method can be described as higher purchase. So what this is, is it's a HP agreement. So if it was a finance lease, it would be going back. And there also the, um, the legal form would be that the item would be going back at the end of it. Um, or, so the uh, so transfer title is not actually transferred, even though the substance of the transaction is really that we own it. So that would be the, the, here. In higher purchase, what you do is is uh, the ownership is only transferred at the end. So the um, the seller um, retains ownership all the way through until the end. Now that's what the HP agreement is. And if it was a purchase in the bank, that would be that. If it was a loan, so what we would have here is finance lease would almost be a loan. Um, in there though, but the transfer title isn't isn't happened there. Um, higher purchase, because the transfer title is right at the end, in there though, it's still effectively a loan. Um, now, but what we might actually have here is that the, the useful economic life not might not be as long um, as the full economic life, but because the transfer has been titled, yeah, there might be some kind of final payment or something like that, like that. And um, part exchange is not a part exchange, so that will be higher purchase in that one. And that is task two. Okay, task three. This task is about ledger accounting, accruals, accruals and prepayments, all right, so, and ethical principles. Oh, very interesting. Right, enter the figures below in the table to show the appropriate trial balance column to not enter zeros. Okay. Uh, so this is just an extract from the trial balance, right. So let's just go through this one. Administration costs. So a cost, which means it's less income available to go to the shareholders, and so it's less of a liability to the shareholders, and therefore it is a debit. And capital which would be a liability to the shareholders, and therefore it's a liability to shareholders from the company. So it's a credit. And sales returns, 
So sales would be a liability to shareholders and would be a credit. So a reduction in those sales would be a debit. And sundry income would be an increase in the liability to shareholders because they get everything else that's left over after the assets and liabilities. So an increase in liability to shareholders, which would be a credit. Okay. Very straightforward. Um, if you are you are working on on the final uh, council of business under the thirty first of December two thousand thirteen, right? Okay, so we've got a um. Well, it's already told us we're doing uh, calls and prepayments, so we're definitely putting a decent timeline in here. X three. Okay, there. Actually, there, and we've got a little note. Okay, an entry is made into the income and expenditure account and an opposite entry into the relevant asset or liability accounts. Okay, in the following period, the entry is removed. So, what we're saying is we're having reversing journals in here. So, let's put a great big reversing journals. So, what it means is let's keep this going out here to December for X4. If an accrual or repayment is made here, it is immediately reversed out on the first day of the following period. So that's what's happening here. So it's reversing journal in here. If it didn't say that, so it, says it doesn't do, do reversings, um, it would be just a net adjustment that you would make over here. But it's saying not. So we definitely know we're going to be reversing journals. So we might even put those in as we're going along. Okay, so looking at the rental income for heat and light. So we've got a, an opening. Let's, let's start putting in some T accounts in here. Which is make life a lot easier. And we're going along. Just put a them in. What I would say in terms of those ones is always set up your T accounts. Never leave and um, just try and do just the answer to the question. Uh, it's trying to tempt you to do that and so you don't get your double entry bookkeeping in. So we open up there though with an accrual of rental income. All right, so it's been quite nasty here. This is income in here, it's accrued income. In there though, so that would be an asset. So, so um, we've got accrued income, and so we open up with a thousand. That's what we got there. Okay, and what else have we got? We've got accrual of heat and light 345, so an accrued expense. This is just known as accruals, um, but I'm going to put expenses there. And so an accrued expense, which is a liability, so that would be a credit of 345. That's what we open up with. The cash book shows the receipts of 3750 in the cash book for rental income. Let's just go bank in here. Debit bank, 3750, and credit our accrual. Oh, sorry. Let's go income, sorry. That would be 3750 here. And what we're going to do is we're going to reverse this journal. So we got this one here, and it says on the so on the first of January two thousand X three, this was reversed. So we opened up with that there, and then we went credit the accrued income, and we went debit the rental income. That's a rental income. Okay, so that's what we've opened up with. Here we've got a bank in here, right, and there we got rent. Okay. In January 2004, the business received £500 in respect to a rent for the month of December 2003. So, here, we received £500, but it actually related to here. Okay, so that's going to be an accrued income. It's an asset. Somebody owes it. And then we get it back after the year end. So, £500. So, debit £500 here. Credit £500 there. Accrued income. Okay. Go over the page. Prepare the rental income account for the year to 31st of September. Close it off by transferring it to the profit and loss account. Okay, so let's close this off then. This will be here. So our PL to the PL is going to be equal to that plus that minus that. And we'll close off our account in here. Only bit. There we go. That's 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 I'm not gonna put it into the individual boxes because it's just a bit of a waste of time. Um right, so that's the first bit. Um cash book for the issues payments for heat and light and six 
four six seven oh okay so payments are heat and light uh, food expenses okay heat and light expenditure four six seven oh because you would have gone payments for so we would have gone credit bank four six five oh heat and light there and we've got bank here right in the 1st of February 2014, an invoice for 2019 is received in respect of the quarter ended, 31st of December. So it's received and the quarter ended. So it's received here for those three. So it's received here, but it's for that, that, and that month. There. Okay. That is outside the year. So we're not interested in that. This is inside the year. So this is what we're interested in here. We get it over here. We should have really had it over here, missing those two months there. So we divide it by three here to get it into the individual things there. And we can see that then that our accrual is those two months in the year. Yeah. So we're going to go accrual here, 860. And we're going to accrual expenses, which is going to be the and on the first, then we would have reversed this one out on the first of um, January 2003. We would have reversed that. We've gone um, debit 365 in accrued expenses. So we will credit three, uh, sorry, 345 in accrued expenses. There, though. What does it say now? It says repair the heat and light account uh, and close it off uh, by the transfer to this profit and loss account. Okay, so let's transfer this to the PL account here. Which will be equal to that plus that minus that there though, and then balance off our account from here and balance that one off there. So we went um, credit uh, the heat and light account, debit the PL account. Um, just for completeness, even though it's not doesn't seem to be in the credit, we went debit the PL account with that, and we went um, credit the PL account with that there though. So that's our rental income and here was our heat and light and that's the complete uh, double entry bookkeeping for that okay so we have now cleared that one off okay prepare the heat and light account for the year oh so we've done that one so we've done C you are preparing the year-end accounts for another client the client's bank calls you up and asks you to email them the draft accounts and they're trying to decide whether to extend the client's overdraft that's not correct if you respond to the bank's request without permission from your clients, which are the fundamental principles of the account? Well, that's just not right, is it? Um, we would be confidentiality we're breaching there, aren't we? Um, so integrity, I mean, it's not necessarily the, the, a bad, well, it is a bad thing to do, but it, without discussing with their clients, but the, the bank aren't asking you to do something that was incorrect. Objectivity, there's not no real threat to your objectivity here. Um, professional confidence and due care, You'd be a bit of an idiot if you did it, um, but it's confidentiality that you're breaching really here. Uh, you have no link to the bank, and uh, there's what could be more of a risk. Let's say that you, as a bank, uh, you, you provide some kind of accountancy service, and one department asked you to give it, hand it over without speaking to them, uh, but it's definitely confidentiality that's been breached there. Right, and that is the end of task three. Okay, task four. Uh, this task is about recording adjustments. Okay, you're a trainee accounting technician. I'll report to the management partner in an accounting practice. Okay, uh, you're working on a final account of the business, the year end. Um, right, okay, so we're, good, we're doing extended trial balance, so having adjustments for the year end, right? Okay, so you're working on the trial balance for the year end of 31st December 2003. So let's put in our. our the x3s yeah, so i suspect that we're going to be needing this for some kind of prepayments but on accruals but we'll see what happens um three okay trial balance has been drawn up the suspense always a suspense account opened up with a debit balance of 1772 right okay so we've got a suspense account here now if you're seeing this i had a quick glance uh, just underneath and it's sort of saying and starting to give some uh, wording always make sure that you put down your T accounts before you start reading anything um, we've got a debit balance of 1772 1772 okay 
Now I need to make some corrections and adjustments for the year ended. You may ignore VAT. Okay. Record the adjustments needed to extract from the trial balance. Right. Okay. You will not need the extract from the trial balance. So, ah, here we go. We've got the extract from the trial balance over here. Right. Okay. An allowance for doubtful debts of 2,420 is required at the year end. Right. Let's have a look at what we've got in here. We've got allowance for doubtful debts in here of two. Right, so we can go into here. Let's create some T accounts. Let's just create a load of T accounts whilst we're at it. Delete out all those numbers that we put into it. So we're going to go for doubtful debts. Okay, and what are we opening up with? We've got 2563 as a credit. 2563 as a credit. And at the end, we need uh, 2420. 2420 is the carried down position. Here, there's the brought down. Okay, so we're going to have to adjust here between the two of them. Be that minus that is going to be our adjustment in here, and this is going to be um, doubtful debts. Um, that's going to be in the PL account basically. Uh, so we're going to have reduction down for that so we're going to debit down for that now so then there though which means we're going to go credit whatever the PL account one is whatever they decide to call it so let's have a look now we've got one of those in here so we're going to go and let's insert in here our shape and we're going to debit that one there 143 and we're going to go credit this one in here 143 Always better if you do your your um your double entry or your double entry book giving me your T accounts. A total column of one five six zero in the purchase returns day book was credited to the purchase ledger control account. All of the entries were made correctly. So let's go through in here. So purchase what was it? Purchase returns day book. Okay, so we went and went purchase returns. And purchase ledger control account, and the amount was one five six zero. And what did we do there? We credited it one five six zero. Okay. Now this is purchase returns. So purchase returns would be a reduction in the purchase expense. The expense would have been, would have been one five six zero to start with, but the return would be the credit of that to reverse it out. But you can see here we've, we've credited it there as well. So what we would actually have to do in here is we've got our suspense account. So we're going to debit here once to reverse it out. And there, twice. Oh, 1560. So, and we'll need to do the opposite to that, which will be the credit there of those two. That will be one, one there. So let's go then back to here. Then suspense account is going to be it, 3120. So suspense account credit 3120. And we're going to debit the purchase ledger control account twice. The amount 3120. Right, okay, so there we go. So that's that one done. Let's get back to the question. In here, closing inventory for the year in the 31st has not been, been recorded. Its value at cost was that. So, its value at cost was 12860. Closing stop. 12860. Okay. 
Including this figure, some items costing 1250, which will be sold for 1140. All right, okay. So actually, what we've then got is we've got a credit 1250, and we're only going to have 1140 here. Okay. So our value of our closing stock is actually going to be. That 12750 in here. Well, statement of financial position is going to be right in this financial. Let's do this one here. Statement of financial position is going to be a debit 12750. There. And then remember that's a reduction in the expense in the profit and loss account. So let's just put that out into our. Here. So the easiest way to do that was, of course, it's an asset. So in the in the in the statement of financial position, the balance sheet, uh, it would be a debit, and in the therefore the one with in the profit and loss account would be a credit. There's a reduction in expenses. A reduction in expenses increase the liability to shareholders. Um, where are we? So that's that one. And the contra item for 674 was debited to both the sales ledger control account and the purchase ledger control account. So let's put our Sales as control account in here. A contra item six four to seven. Seven four seven, and it was debited there. So, okay. Now contra item. So what are we doing here then? Which way we're we going to go around here? Well, if we were reducing our, we're stressing them off. We're reducing our supply, our um, our expenses to us or a liability to our suppliers, and we are reducing the amount that they owe us so this was the correct one in here the reduction of the liability to the suppliers but the reduction to the there, so that's, that was the wrong one that was the one that was wrong so we're going to go equals six cents four to reverse it out the initial one and that one to put it in the correct point and so the suspense account must have those two over there so one three four eight it's going to be this one in here Okay, 1348. Let's go back to here, insert our shapes. One three four eight here and insert out the shape up here as well, which would be into the sales ledge control account. One three four eight. Okay, so that's that's that lot there. Um any more? So that's the end of it. Let's just check here and see whether this now answers. Typically, you would see in the questions that they do, just so you can check your work, and so you can check it and see that that's that's correct. Right. So that's uh, the first part of task four done. Nicely done there. Okay. Um, show the correct entry to close off the sales re sales returns account and insert an appropriate narrative. Okay. So let's close. Where's our sales returns account? In here which would be sales returns here. Right. So we've got a debit balance in here, so we'll be going credit the sales returns. What we've got is our options. Sales returns. Uh, insert our shape. We're going to debit our sales returns. So we're going to credit, sorry, we're going to credit our sales returns here. So our sales returns to close that account off. So that's going to be 494982. And then we're going to have our transfer to the that profit and loss account. What we got here? We got profit and loss account there. Insert our shape and put in our profit and loss account there. So those are our debits and credits for that one. Okay. And our narrative is going to be something like, pick for our narrative here, closure of the general, general ledger for 31st of December 2013. It's not a bad one. Closure of the sales return account to the suspense account. That's definitely not it. Transfer sales returns to the profit loss account. That's the better one. We'll go for that one. 
Now transfer the sales um, onto the statement of financial position. So a statement of financial position is the ownership for shareholders, the balance sheet in there though, to the profit loss account is a statement of financial performance. It would have been quite nice actually if we would have put statement of financial performance there to make the question a bit trickier, but um, that's that it was that one, it's option number, number three is the, the correct one. Right, which two of the following statements are appropriate in light of the above situation? Okay, the client may have deliberately omitted accrued expenses to maximise the offer from the potential... Oh, ah, no, sorry, hang on. You are now in the process of finalising figures for the draft accounts. Your manager is concerned because there is no accrued expense at 31st of, of December 2003, whereas at 31st of December 2003, accrued amounts were there. So we, got, so we would have had some accruals. So let's go through and actually put this down. Oh, actually, I'll do another sheet. And here, let's put some trial balance or some... Instead of, and then post what would be going on here. So we got crawls, and we're going to have our expenses account as well. Expenses. Okay. So at the end of of uh, there we had four four seven eight oh. And what we did was we reversed that out there though. And we went, so we went debit accruals and we went credit expenses. So we reduced our expenses from here. Okay, you're aware the client is looking to retire and a potential buyer has made a generous offer for the business. So an offer that may be a multiple, let's say, of profit. So which of the following statements is appropriate to choose to? The client may have deliberately admitted accrued expenses to maximise the offer of a potential buyer. Definitely possible, that one, because we would have increased, the, um, increased our uh, profit by reducing our expenses. It is your duty as a client's accountants to maximise the sales price of his business. That would be unethical. Uh, that would be a threat to your ooh, be objectivity, wouldn't it, probably? Um, as well as your integrity and just everything, really. So that's definitely not going to be that. Your manager should request a meeting with the client to discuss why there's no accrued expenses in the year. Yes, you wouldn't go straight to then the seller or whatever, or the buyer, or you wouldn't go in, that, even though you know, they might be um, trying to sort of be... Uh, mistake the accounts. You should report the possible missing uh, missing accrued expenses to potential buyer for business. That would breach your um, breach your confidentiality. Uh, so you may refuse to um, sign off on the accounts and not provide an opinion, uh, but you wouldn't go and um, talk to the potential buyer about it. So it's that one, that one, and that one. And I think that is the end of task number four. Task five. This task about period and routines and extended trial balance. Okay, you're preparing a bank reconciliation. Oh, the bank reconciliation. That's good. And uh, remember, we're going to use now in our, our four steps of the bank reconciliation. Um, the bank balance is showing the bank statement is debit of eight hundred pound, and on the balance of the cash book is a credit of three four forty. Right. So let's get. Uh, let's show. Easiest way to do this then is first of all is three T accounts. Okay, let's try and convert it across. Easiest way to do it. Right, so bank statement, bank's perspective. Bank statement, hours, and our cash flow. So from the bank's perspective, it's a debit of £800. From ours is the opposite way around. So we are an asset to the bank of £800, which means they are a liability of £800 for us. And in our cash book, we have a credit of 374. 374. So these two are our positions, and that is the bank's position. Okay, and take the colour out now, because I, I like to use colour when this actually there's no filling okay um bank statements compared to the cash book the following points noted right bank charges of 121 were not entered in the, in the uh, cash book so we've got our bank statement here bank charges 121 not in the cash book now though so when we've been through ticking through um from our bank statement here to our cash book these bank charges here actually which would be on this side it should be there, it would be there from our, our perspective, and would be there then. Those should be in. So they're not in, they should be in. 
pack, one of those ones, like that. Okay. Um, all right, so which three adjustments we rate to the cash flow? Let's have a quick scan of that one. So that one definitely would be in number one's gonna be gonna be in there. Okay. Um, let's look at number two. A check received from a customer for two two hundred eighty. It's been recorded in the cash book, but it's been dishonored and not yet entered in the records. Right. So it's been dishonored in there though, and not yet entered in the records. So in the bank statement, it's gone. No, you're not having that one. Um, the 280 doesn't appear in the bank statement, or it's going to have, it's going to come back and it's going to have um, 280 there, and then that will be 280 in the credit from our point of view. So we're going to have to go and credit that out of our cash book because I think did just say it was bank it was checked from a customer, wasn't it? Yes, from a customer. So we're going to have to adjust that, and um, because we've had it in our cash book as 280 from the customer, we're going to go and. Um, Credit the cash book and debit the sales ledger control account. Right, a check for 675 from a supplier has not been presented as payment from the bank. So let's go back here. 675 from the supplier. Is it from a supplier? Or to a supplier? To a supplier. Let's put that in here. Sorry, delete that one. 675 to a supplier. Is not yet in the bank statement. That is going to be in our unpresented checks in the bank statement. Sorry, unpresented checks in the bank reconciliation. So we're going to minus 765. Okay. A direct debit of £650. The local council appears only on the bank statement. So that one is going to have to be put in there. So right here it's in the bank statement. And it is what? It is. 650. Bank would see that as an asset to them. We would have it as a credit then to us. And so it would go in. And so that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one are going to be the ones that are going to need to move across. And cash sale receipts of £90 have been entered in the cash book but not yet banked. Okay, so they're in the cash book. £90 in here. That's going to be outstanding arguments. Okay. The bank has deducted a payment of £50 in error. So that's an error in there. Um, so we wouldn't be putting that in. And so that would be an adjustment. To the so it's going to be then uh, that number one, two, and four. Okay, so that's the answer for that, that one. Uh, which of the statements about the sales ledger control account is true? Let's do one. Uh, let's choose one. It records an amount owed from individual customers. No. So let's look. I'll throw this one here. So if we've got our general ledger over here, and so our general ledger over here, and we've got our subsidiary ledgers over here. In here we've got our sales ledger control account, and in here we've got our sales ledger. In the general ledger, the sales ledger control account is the total of all of our uh, sales uh, individual accounts. In the sales ledger is where we have the individual accounts, so it's not that one. Uh, so where are we? Not that one. Totals from the sales day book and the cash book. Totals from the sales day book and cash book, debit side are posted to the sales ledger control account. We wouldn't have any, any posting from the cash book to the sales ledger control account because that's just gone. Um, we just go debit, cash, credit, sales. So it's not that answer there though. It would total from the sales day book, which would be um, debit, sales ledger control account, and um, credit, sales ledger, uh, sales. Sales returns will be recorded on the debit side of the sales ledger control account. They they won't be. Look, let's, let's have a look here. So here's our uh, sales ledger control account in here. So here's our sales ledger control account, and we would have gone and also over here then is our sales, and let's have sales ledger sales returns. So we'll have sales here, and we'll have sales returns. So sales from the sales day book, let's say thousand credit thousand there though, debit the sales ledger control account there. Sales returns, let's see now they've been sent back. So we're going to go 
debit the sale returns and credit the sales agent control account because they don't always it anymore so that would be how it would look so um, sales returns will be recorded on the credit side of the sales ledger control account. Discounts received will be recorded on the credit side of the of the sales ledger control account. Discounts received. So let's go back to here. Discounts received and discounts received. Be discounts allowed in this one so that's actually that one's not right either right so let's go back and because obviously one of them is right totals from the sales day book and the cash pay book debit side ah right okay no what it is is it's um so here we go so if we post them it's a bit of a rubbish question to be honest so we've got the cash book let's say here and we've got their debit side, so we've received amounts here. So we've received amounts here, though, and also as well. Totals from the sales day book. Ah, right, okay. And cash book debit side. So cash book debit side in here. Cash book, here's our debit side. We received an amount here, there, though, we would go. Uh, we've got debit cash book, credit sales. And then in terms of our sales day book, well, we've gone credit sales, 1,000, debit sales edge control account. Yeah, so the answer to that one is B. And um, it was useful to go through it and just sort of see whether it's uh, there, though. It's a little bit annoying, that little slash in the middle. Uh, right, okay. You now work in accounts for a different business. You have uh, the following extended trial balance. The adjustments have already been correctly entered. Okay. Extend the figures into the profit and loss account statement of financial position columns. Okay, right, so what we're going to see here, now we're going to extend this out, are we? Right, just before we start, I'll give a quick explanation in here. Let's have another sheet, workings in here. Um, in terms of a number line, because what we're going to see here is uh, our debits, okay, and our credits over here, right? These are minuses, and these are positives. If we were to add them together now always coming back to zero so we're just going to keep that because what they're probably going to do is have some uh, adjustments which are going to be the opposite side of, of these amounts here so in terms of accrued income then we put that one in and that is going to be insert our shapes let's just leave that one for the moment because we might Bank's going to be the asset at the end of the year, and that is going to be all right. So we can actually do the accrued income because it looks all right because it's a debit debit figure. Accrued income would be an asset that we're going to get, you know, some money that we're going to get later on. So it's an asset. You know, we've already actually earned the money. It's going to be paid for later on. We haven't invoiced it yet, so it's going to be an asset. So it's going to be on the debit side of the statement of financial position or the balance sheet. Uh, Seven two eight one. there our capital is the amount owing to shareholders so it's a credit it's a liability still at the end of the year so it goes in our statement of financial position so it sits over there as a credit side on that amount there our closing inventory here so you see we've got two here and there so one of them is going to go to the statement of financial position and that is going to be the asset the debit side to seven two nine and because that is reducing expenses, it then is an increase in the liability to shareholders because they get that reduction in expense. So it's a credit side in the statement of in the statement of financial performance of the profit loss count. It is rather weird, isn't it, how we have statement of financial performance or position, um, which everybody calls the balance sheet. We can't seem to we seem to have the statement of uh, profit and loss, even though if you want to be consistent, you have a statement of financial position. Uh, performance sorry uh, commission income so we've got a credit here and we've got another credit here so those two are going to be together and they're going to be in their, their income so they're in their profit and loss account in here the two of them added together which is going to be uh, the 18 18272 plus the yeah that's going to be 22 okay made anything hard yet so far 
All right, depreciation charges. So that's going to be charges. So that's charge in the year. So that's that's going to go into the statement of profit and loss as a de debit. You can see it's on the debit side as well. If it was on the credit side, we would be thinking that would be our accumulated depreciation and be in the statement of financial position. Our drawings is going to go. That's nothing to do with financial performance. That's just a payment to the uh, to our shareholders and that's going in our statement of financial position 40,000 there our general expenses okay so let's put our in here what have we got we got a, a debit there and a credit there so you see that we had our uh, position at the start and so that's going to be a debit a net debit of that minus that so that one is going to be 65871 okay our motor vehicle cumulative depreciation okay so this is then our like our reduction in the our value of our assets so that's going to be a credit in their statement of financial position those two figures added together those two credits there together and um, so 116500 into there motor vehicles at cost so there we've got those two together we've not had any kind of adjustments for any disposals that might have been omitted so that's going to be 174300 here our opening inventory now that's going to go to the statement of financial performance of the profit and loss account so we're going to go credit um the opening inventory in there though debit the profit and loss account one seven two six eight eight there though prepaid expenses in here so this is an adjustment for the year end one so we've already in this one we've had reversing journals so it's already been posted in the, in the general ledger account so here we've gone um there that's going to be in the statement of financial position it's an asset because we've we've paid them up early these expenses and they're going to be in the following year so that'll be that in the debit line our purchases are well here you can see we've got a debit here we've got a credit here so the one's deducted from the other and so that leaves us with our debit oh what would it be? That is going to be 97519. Okay. Our purchase ledger control account. Okay. That's an asset, isn't it? That's that's what we're we're owed from our shareholders, uh, from our customers. And though we got we got a ooh, yeah, oh, sorry, purchase ledger control, not sales ledger control account. Sorry, purchase ledger control amount that we owe to our suppliers so it'll be that credit there minus that debit there so that's gonna be 13971 here as a credit let's slide that over to there as a credit okay salaries so that's an expense in the year so it goes into our statement of financial performance or our profit and loss account um, as a debit an expense reduces the amount that we owe our shareholders and therefore it's a debit sales and the shareholders own those sales liability to them so credit in this statement of financial performance 675 and profit and loss account and sales edge control account is going to be an asset and we've got an adjustment here where we've got a debit and a credit so they deliberately tried to just mess you about with the number line there and so that's going to be 16 794 and our suspense account here which i'll take it we've written that off down to zero are we supposed to put zeros in here or not let's have a look do not enter zeros in the news column cells okay so we don't put it in there let's just check that that balances um three five seven four plus seven two six minus seven three three yep okay fair enough uh, 7300 isn't it 7300 right and then our VAT which is our liability so a liability goes into the balance sheet as its credit there 14298 like that right so that's those ones there so this stuff here then needs to be added up here so getting out the calculator adding them up um, So 
So, that there. So our expenses are greater than our, our income in this one. That's interesting. Okay, so we made a loss in the year. So here we would have something that was going to go into here. So the difference between those ones is 38013. So we're going to go credit the PL in there, which means we're going to debit the PL in the statement of financial position when we, when we close this off for the end of the year. So that's a reduction in our liabilities to our shareholders. They took the loss. Actually. And then that one will be a profit show loss for the year that will go into that one there. Now in an exam, I, well, no, to be fair, you can, well, I, would probably, I might even actually write that down in the exam and then, and then add it all up at the bottom um, to just close the whole thing down, really. Um, so that is that one, then. Make that a little bit smaller. Okay. And I think that is the end of task five. I put the put the totals into the bottom. Don't need to add, add that up right now. Um, thanks for listening.